Hello, everyone. My name is Larry Novak. I'm a licensed structural engineer, a fellow of the American Concrete Institute, a fellow of the Structural Engineering Institute, and a lead accredited professional. I am the Director of Structural Engineering for the Portland Cement Association, and it's my pleasure today to talk about the strut and tie modeling, specifically from a practicing engineer's point of view, which I have been for 30 plus years. And I've been involved in the development of strut and tie from its infancy in the United States. <clears throat> so we're going to be talking about something completely different than what typical design is. We're going to go back to the basics and discuss philosophy of design because that is the basis of strut and tie modeling. So we're going to talk about behavior of structures. What's actually in the code? How do we develop the model, which is really the art of the process? And then at the very end, we're going to do an example and have a summary of what we discussed. Um, certainly, as we go, type your questions in. I, If they were something I can address as I'm doing it, I will pick them up as we go. If not, we will address them all during the Q&A sessions forthcoming. Let's talk a little bit about basic principles. What we see here on the screen is half a beam. Um, and what we've done is taken this wood beam and saw cut along the solid black line a crack. And at the very top, we have a hinge. But what we've done is drill a hole vertically up through the beam along the red dash line and thread a bungee cord through that and knotted it at the top and the bottom. And you can see at mid-span of this beam, you can see a hook for loading. The idea here is imagine this were a concrete beam. And that bungee cord is the stirrup in the structure. As we put load on it, it would be a mechanism without that bungee cord. So what's really happening is the load is traveling up to the top of the beam, coming down diagonally, and then lifted back up through the bungee cord, and then down diagonally to the support. Literally like a truss you might have done in school. So you, you definitely have a load path where the green dash lines are compression elements and the red solid lines are tension type elements and even though we have a full crack in this structure which would normally be a mechanism the bungee cord or the stirrup is lifting the load back up so really even though this could be a solid element we can always imagine solid elements as having trusses embedded in them to handle the forces from their point of application to their point of support. There's nothing new here, but it's a different way of looking at a solid continuous problem as an incremental member a truss problem. And these members in the truss can even be pin connected, and this would still be a stable structure. So what type of things are we talking about? Well, we're going to get to the point that Strut and tie can be used for anything. The code permits you to substitute it. But it is effectively the only game in town for deep beams. Um, updated in ACI 318.11, we even changed the definition of deep beams. So for both shear and flexure, a deep beam is going to have a span to depth ratio of 4. And that's clear span to depth. So anything at about a four, one to four ratio or more stout, aka more deeper or less slender, is going to behave in these type of truss behaviors. Specifically, if we're able to develop these struts so that the loading and the support, similar to the image in the lower left, allows for the development of these type of struts so that the load could come down and reach to the support, or come down and reach to its support. So that type of behavior is important to be able to develop. So what does the code say, specifically ACI 318.14? We might note that strut and tie modeling is now in the main body of the code. It's no longer an appendix or just textbook theory. It's in the main body of the code. And what does this main body of the code say? Well. Specifically about deep beams, it says deep beams shall be designed taking into account nonlinear distribution of longitudinal strain over the depth of the beam. What does that mean? 